be live. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, today, we're going to be talking about a new kind of like syntax and expression language that uh, uh, we largely knew know, um, came up with over the past few weeks. Um, he can talk a lot more about the motivation for it, um, the interface for it, what you can do with it, and, and all that. Some minor logistic stuff before we uh, get going. This is being recorded. It will be posted on YouTube afterwards. Um, we will mostly be talking about this new uh, expression language today. So we're very open to questions, um, but please try to keep them focused on that. Um, and in that vein, if you do have questions, um, please put them on the in, in the little Q&A section with the box on the right. Um, so we'll, we'll be going through those after. Um, and, and you can also upvote the ones that you want to hear answered the most, and we'll basically go down in order answer that. Um, for, the, for the chat today, we'll, we'll be talking about the motivation, the interface, and then running through some examples. It will probably be on the shorter side. So if you guys have questions or examples of what you want to see it would look like or anything like that, please just post them in there, and we'll, we'll probably rely on those pretty liberally, um, or we can end early as well. Um, I think that's all the logistics stuff. Uh, Nuno, you want to take it away? Uh, yeah. Uh, so I think just touching briefly on the motivation to start, uh, uh, I think something that we found as we work with LLMs is that they're most useful when we pair them up with some code that runs either before the LLM or after the LLM. So if it's before, it would be to like assemble the inputs that we pass into the LLM. If it's after, it would be to parse the, the outputs of the LLM or to run them, use them somehow uh, in some way. So that in essence is actually what all of our built-in chains are. They're just common patterns to that organize code that runs either before or after an LLM. Uh, so that's things like the SQL database chain, the API chain, the you know, tagging chain, extraction chain, all those things. And that mostly works great, <laughs> at least we like to think so. Um, but uh, it wasn't easy to create custom combinations, so custom patterns for your specific use cases, uh, or to modify the ones that we have created and made available in, in, the, in the library. Uh, so that's uh, the main motivation behind the expression language is to just make it super easy to build uh, any custom combinations in a way that you can fully inspect what's there and modify it, et cetera. Uh, but before we could do that, uh, we actually had to do something else, which was to create a single interface that uh, all of our building blocks implement. So we have lots of different building blocks in, in Langchain. We have prompt templates, we have LLMs, chat models, output parsers, chains, tools, retrievers, all sorts of things. Uh, and they all implemented different different interfaces, so different methods. So you'd call generate on a chat model, but you'd call run on a chain, and you'd call uh, format on a prompt or whatever it may be. Um, and that turns out to not work very well if you want to compose them, because we'd have to keep guessing what kind of thing is this, what method do we call on it, etc. So the first step that we took was to uh, just create a single interface that all of these things implement, uh, which I can show to you now. And I think adding adding on to that, even like we we had like a lot of chains didn't support kind of like batch properly, or they didn't, or or a lot of different components didn't even have batch, or they didn't even have streaming. So it wasn't even like so. There's one method. There's there's one there's one. Uh, there's one motivation where like there's different ways of like call and run kind of do the same thing and there's a bunch of confusion around that there's another component where you know streaming just wasn't supported on a lot of the chains or you had to do it through basically uh, callbacks which which still exists and you can still absolutely use and, and i think there's pros and cons to that but now there's a more standard way to kind of do all these things and async as well yeah exactly uh so yeah something that you'll notice as well uh in uh, as you update Langchain to the latest version, is the async support throughout the library is way more complete than it was. Uh, now there should be very little that doesn't have async support. Um, and that's uh, true of the new methods that I'm going to uh, explain now as well. 
Uh, so the most basic method is is just you know you have a single uh, input that you want to pass to a prompt or a model or a retriever and you want to get back a single output. So that's what we call invoke. Um, so that's uh, uh, that's the most basic method. Oh, there we go. Uh, wasn't finding that. Uh, so you just pass a single input and you get back a single output. Uh, then the next step up is you have a list of inputs. Um, so in this case, we're calling the same chain with you know two two dictionaries of uh, inputs. One is topic bears and the other is topic cats. And we get back a list of two different outputs, uh, which basically is the result of running this a chain over these uh, two inputs. Um, the reason this is useful is that where possible, uh, we actually take advantage of the batch capabilities of the underlying um, uh, components of the chain. So if you built a chain that is a prompt passed into, say, an OpenAI LLM, we actually, uh, when you call batch with a list of three things, we actually call OpenAI only once because they offer that capability capability in their API and we take advantage of it. And you don't have to think about that or do anything special for that. Uh, and then finally, something that a lot of people have asked for is uh, a stream method that returns an iterator or an async iterator in the async version. Um, so this you can just consume this with a standard uh, for loop uh, in Python, so it becomes a lot easier to consume streaming out, streaming output uh, from an LLM or from a, a a sequence of prompt to LLM, etc. And then you have the async versions. Uh, so a invoke is the async version of of invoke. A batch is the async version of batch and a stream is the async version of a stream, which uh, returns an async iterator. So now that we have uh, this interface, uh, we, we can combine these things because they all implement the same interface. We can combine them into sequences um, and let's see what that looks like. So, so first of all, if you're used to using uh, Langchain from before, notice that I'm importing exactly the same things as you're already using. So chat prompt template, chat open AI. You've already seen these things before. You're already using them in your code. We haven't changed any of that. All the arguments are the same. Uh, you, you create these things in exactly the same way. So we create a model, we create a prompt, and then if we want a chain, which is just, you know, pass the inputs into the prompt, format the prompt, pass the formatted prompt into the model, and get me the result of the model. That's expressed by this. So we pipe the prompt into the model. And that becomes a sequence where we first call the prompt and then the model. So if I call this, I get back an AI message because this is a chat model. And if we go into Langsmith, let um, me make sure I'm getting the right run. So yes, 5 p.m. for me. Um, so <laughs> uh, you can see that overall, we call this thing that we call a runnable sequence. And we pass the input, uh, which is foo bears. And the final output was a message which you know contains why don't bears like fast food because they can't catch it. Uh, and you can see inside this sequence, actually two things ran. So one is the prompt where we pass the inputs and we got back a formatted prompt in the form of a prompt value. And then the second thing is we called the chat open AI model with that formatted prompt and we got back this AI message as a, as a response. And you can see, you can inspect exactly what happened here and you see this is gonna become even more useful uh, for more complex change that I'm gonna show you in a second. So sometimes you're going to want to uh, customize some arguments that you'd pass to like model.generate uh, before or predict messages or all the other methods that we had. Uh, so for instance, the stop words is, a, is an example of that. In order to do that, you can still do that here. All you need to do is call model.bind with the arguments that you want to specify. So in this case, I'm building an 
a different chain now, which is the same prompt, but uh, making sure that the model only produces a single line because I'm stopping on the first new line character. And if I call that, I get back an incomplete joke, which isn't terribly nice, but that is what I asked for. Um, so you can see now we get back a single line because the stop word was applied. And we can see the stop word here in the invocation params that were sent to the model. So that's not the only thing we can we can attach to models. So uh, that's we use the same bind or, uh, the same bind method to attach uh, functions if we want to use the open AI functions. So this is us describing a function here. So this is a function called joke, uh, which uh, OpenAI is supposed to then call, so to speak, with a setup uh, and a punchline for the joke. So kind of splitting up the joke into two uh, components. And so what we're doing is we're using the exact same prompt as before, but we're saying now, hey, I want the model to be bound to these functions, and I want to actually force the model to call the joke function. And um, so if we now call this, Oh, that would be because I didn't run this. Uh, if we now call this, then we get the next one. So you, you can see now the output we got was a function call for the function called joke, and the arguments uh, were this the JSON object with a setup and the punchline. Uh, but uh, maybe we can just keep chaining things and see what happens. So now. Um, something that you probably are going to find useful is because this model is a chat model, it outputs chat messages. Uh, but sometimes you're just going to want the, the string output, like the content of the message. So to do that, all you have to do is use this string output parser and create a chain where you pipe the prompt into the model and then you pipe it to the string output parser. And all this does is extract the content out of the message. So if we run that, You see, we get back the same joke or similar, I assume, uh, but now only the text. So if I go and check it out, there we go. So now you see this sequence now actually has three steps because we asked for three steps. So we still have the same chat prompt template, exactly the same prompt. Uh, we have the model, which produced an AI message, but then the string output parser is actually extracting only the text out of the message. So it gets the full message with content, et cetera, and then it extracts the, the string output. So if we go back to those open AI functions, um, remember, if we look here, this is what we got back last time. It was the raw output from open AI with a function call. Uh, but we actually probably don't want to use it exactly like that. We want to parse it and extract the information we actually asked for. So we have a few parsers. We already had these before. Now they just implement this same interface. So we have a few parsers designed for open AI functions. So let's try this JSON output functions parser. So if we run that, so you see the same prompt, the same model bound to the functions. And now we are adding the JSON output functions parser at the end. Did I run that already? No. Uh, and now what this does is it extracts the arguments uh, for the function. So setup and punchline. If we go and check out what that looks like, you can see we have a sequence of three. Again, chat open AI produce the full function call with the name of the function and the arguments, but the output functions parser turned that big thing into just the arguments, so the setup and the punchline. And all this took was to chain one more thing at the end. So it's really easy for us to you know, uh, evolve and iterate on the stuff we're designing because we just chain one other thing. And and so this is basically the, the tagging and extraction chains that we've got in LinkChain right now, where you kind of pass in unstructured data and then you get back structured stuff. And actually what 
and 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 if you've kind of like used those in LangChain, there's a function called like create tagging chain or something like that. And basically what that does under the hood is it kind of creates a specific prompt. It creates a specific kind of like model quargs and it creates a specific output parser, all of which are exactly the same here. And then it passes them into LLM chain. Um, and so it, it, this is the equivalent of that. It's just kind of like expressed um, more kind of like declaratively and, 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 and um, is, is kind of like shown to the user and it's a bit more clear kind of like what's going on. But this is exactly that kind of like functionality there. Yeah, exactly. And now, um, I guess a big advantage of this one is that we can just switch out something at the end and see what happens. So there we have JSON output functions parser, which produced the whole KWRGs object. Now, if we switch out for JSON key output functions parser, and we select the key called setup, I'm guessing we're just going to get the value of the key, the setup key, but let's find out. Yes, that's what we got. Uh, and if we go and check that out, so we can see uh, OpenAI produced the full function call, name of the function, setup, punchline, and then the new parser that we chose. Out of all this stuff, it extracted uh, just why don't bears wear shoes, which was this value of the setup uh, argument here. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, just showing you how to uh, iterate mm -hmm. on the stuff you're designing and, uh, you know, switching out parts of the sequence and seeing what happens and inspecting in like Smith. So something we can do after now is uh, we have a few helpers uh, which you can use to uh, take inputs from say the beginning of uh, of the sequence and use them further down uh, uh, later in the sequence. But I think it's easier to just see them in action. So here we are going to basically recreate uh, uh, what we have as the LLM chain in the library, uh, but in a way that you know is designed exactly for uh, the use case that you have. So uh, we're importing a few things. We're importing the Chroma vector store, the OpenAI embeddings model, and this runnable pass-through. So runnable pass-through is just a function that receives uh, some argument and just returns the same argument, just the identity function. And and I was a little confused by this at the start, but I think like the way to think about it is like, you know, the the you you basically want to maybe like pipe some arguments through to the next step without really changing them in any way because you don't you, you because you need them not only at the first step but also at the second step and then maybe you do that for the third step as well and so this is basically just a way of doing that of like carrying arguments through yeah exactly um so the first thing we do is we create the retriever so we create the vector store in this case we have a single document which is just this very short uh, sentence and the open air embeddings we create a retriever from that, uh, and then the main template, the main prompt that we're going to be using is this prompt that expects two inputs. So uh, answer the question based only on the following context, and it expects us to inject something there that we're calling context, and then it also expects us to inject the actual question that the user passed in. So from reading this, uh, I would guess that the question is something that we're going to get when we invoke the chain, but the context sounds like something that we're going to need to produce ourselves inside this chain. So uh, let's see how we do that. So and if we skip ahead, <laughs> we can we can see that that is actually exactly what's happening. So uh, we're invoking the chain with a question, and now somehow we need to create this context. So creating this context is what the re a retriever is get very good for because we pass the question into the retriever and we get back the set of relevant documents. Uh, so, but let's say that all we did was this. All we did is call the retriever with a question. What would happen in this case is we'd get back the, the list of documents, but uh, the list of documents is not enough to inject into the prompt template because the prompt template also needs the original question because that's, uh, that's kind of what this use case of retrieval augmented generation is, is, you know, we still need the original question. We just enrich it with some documents that we got from somewhere. 
So that's kind of the motivation for this runnable pass-through, uh, where we keep the question, but we're so we're passing the question through to the next step, uh, but we're enriching it with an additional uh, key, which is the the documents we get from the retriever, and we're calling that key context. Then we pipe that into the prompt, which uh, remember takes two keys, context, and question, which match these keys here. And uh, then we pipe the prompt into the model. And then finally, we pipe the model into the string output parser just to get the, the content of the message. So if we run that, well, I should actually run them all. Uh, we should get the answer. And now, uh, if we go and check that out here, we have a larger tree. So you can see this is a sequence that actually has a few steps, right? So we start with this thing called the runnable map. So the runnable map um, kind of combines the output of the two things that are inside it. So it passes the question through. That's just, you know, get the question, produce the question. Doesn't change it in any way. But it also kind of enriches that with the document. So uh, in this case, because this is a toy example, we have the same document repeated twice, uh, which isn't terribly useful. But um, so what? Yeah, what we're doing here is we're passing query into a retriever, and the retriever is producing these documents as relevant information that we then pass into the prompt template. Which means what we expect now is if we click here into the prompt, oops. Uh, we should get now two things being injected as input to the prompt. I think this is easy to see in JSON. Uh, so we have the question itself, which is the original question that was passed in, and we have the, the list of documents, uh, which is the context. And then we format that into this big prompt that's going to be passed into ChatOpenAI. And you can see that's what we're passing to ChatOpenAI is answer the question. This is what was written into the prompt. This is the space where we had uh, the the word I'm looking for, the placeholder for the context, which has now been replaced with the list of documents. And this is, is this is where the placeholder for the question was, which has now been replaced with the question. And uh, the chat model produced the, the answer as an AI message. And then the string output parser took that AI message and turned it into just the string. And now uh, we have a small variation of that, uh, which is now uh, we want to have a more complicated prompt uh, where we still have the original question. We still have the context, which is the documents from the retriever. But now we also want to pass in uh, the language that we want the answer in. Uh, so you can see now we're invoking this chain with this dictionary of two keys. One key is the question, where did Harrison work? The other key is the language, Italian. So uh, this looks similar to the above. The difference is now, instead of passing through, we want to, out of the input, we want to get the key language. And we want to keep that with the name language. Uh, we want to get the key question and keep that with the key with called question. And then we want to get the context out of the retriever, passing the question into it. And then we pipe that into the prompt, and we pipe that into the model, and we pipe that into the string output parser. And if we run that. And, and just highlighting something quick here as well, because this was a little confusing to me as well and initially. Like the, the reason we're using like item getter, um, or you'll see like some lambdas down down below as opposed to like runnable pass through, um, is because of the difference in the input types. So in the in the first one it was just a string, and that was because the first step was uh, I mean there was only one input, and so we I we could have made it a dictionary, right, Nuno, and it would have been yeah we could, and it, in that case we would have used the the item getter above there as well. Yeah, so so I think like that that difference in the in the input string versus dictionary is just the the cause for the difference between the runnable pass through and the item getter. And the other the other thing that I'll say is. Um, having it written like this also, I think, makes it a lot more clear how to change the prompt and then how to change kind of like the input variables as well. Um, because it, you can kind of see here the whole flow. It's not hidden uh, within kind of like a, a, the call method of a chain or anything like that. So I think it makes it a lot more clear to see what's going on.
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm going to skip this example, which is a little more, a little longer, and you guys can check it out in the documentation. Uh, I think this one is interesting to chat about quickly, but maybe I need to format this differently. Uh, so in this one, uh, so another thing that sometimes we need to do with, with LLMs is to actually call an LLM multiple times to achieve some goal that we have in mind. Um, so this would be the case, for instance, of the SQL database chain, where we you know, call the LLM to turn the natural language question into a, uh, in, into a SQL query, then we run the SQL query in the database, and then we call the LLM again to uh, to turn like the table of results into some kind of uh, summary answer that we give to the user. Uh, so that's actually turns out to be something, you know, that's a useful pattern. So uh, this is what I'm going to show you here uh, or something similar. Uh, so the idea here is if we, let me actually do the following. Uh, let me comment this out. So if we check here, we have this prompt one, which is just what is the city person is from? And if we, this is a very simple prompt, right? So this prompt, we can check, uh, we can pipe it into a model and pipe it into the string output parser, and we should get back some kind of response. So if we try and run that, uh, it expects a person um, key, so we need to pass it a dictionary with a person key. In this case, the person is Obama. So if we run that, there we go. So what was the question? What was the city person is from? So what is the city Obama is from? Barack Obama was born in Honolulu, Hawaii. So we go and check it out in Langsmith. It's very verbose, by the way. It's not just giving you the city. It's giving you a whole yeah. set everything yeah exactly <laughs> so uh we could chain it into some other uh, model to cut the verbosity down uh so you can see three things were run so we had the prompt uh which took as input this single key this is always easier to see in json uh took as input this single key obama person and it formatted it that into this prompt which is what is the city obama is from and then we ran that into uh, chat open AI. What is the city Obama's from? And it gave us this uh, verbose answer uh, as an AI message. And then we extracted the content out of the AI message just into the text. So that's you know easy enough. Uh, but now let's say that we actually want to find out something more complicated, which is what country is the city in respond in a particular language? Um, so we could use that by itself as well. So let's build that. Something dangerous I'm doing, writing code live. Um, I believe in you, Nino. So now let's comment that out. And we call chain three. But chain three expects two things, which is a city and a language. So let's call this with the city. And let's try the city that we know we want. So Honolulu. And the language, uh, Spanish, like we have there. Run that. Yeah, we got the answer. Uh, so the city of Honolulu is in the United States. Great. So this is also a simple enough uh, sequence. So again, it's a se sequence of three things like the other one. We're passing two input variables, Honolulu and Spanish, and we're getting back the final output, which is the city of Honolulu is in the United States. So um, you can see the prompt template formatted this into this prompt. And that prompt, what country is the city on Lulu in, respond in Spanish, was what was passed into the LLM, has received the answer as an AI message, because this is a chat model, and then got the text output out of that. 
But now let's say that we actually want something more complicated, which is we want to run the whole chain at once. And basically we want the answer of what country is the city that Obama was born in uh, respond in Spanish, something like that. Uh, but we want to build that out of these building blocks. So the way we do that, now let me comment out the other stuff that I'm messing about. So the way we do that is by building, you know, this chain two out of the other two things, basically. So first the city, which is, remember city is this output, is this input that we want to pass into prompt two, right? So the value of city is actually going to be the value of running chain one. So I could just write, copy this and put it here. So this basically means, hey, to get the value of this key city, please run this whole thing. Um, but let's, there we go. And the language is just going to be the language that we pass in. And then that way we can now run prompt two because now we have a city and we have the language. We can pass that to the model and we can run the string output parser. So let's see what that looks like. So now uh, the, the inputs that we actually pass in is person and language. And if we run that. And that prompt to model store output parser is actually the same as chain three, right? So we could have actually just replaced that all with chain. Ah, yes, we could. Yeah. And I can actually do that. Uh, so let me actually do that. Maybe I can even give these nice names. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, so that would be, there we go. Chain three would be get country for city in language. So now, oops, what else? So now we see we can actually build the you know more complicated thing out of two simpler things. Oops. So chain two, which I guess is get country for person. Um, so this basically is, you know, we get use the other get city for person chain and we get the language as an input. And then we pass this into this get country for city chain. Uh, and that put together becomes the third chain, uh, which is get country for person. And if I'm really lucky, this may actually now run. <laughs> yes, there we go. Uh, so now we can see what this looks like here. So you see the, the total. <laughs> yes, I type very loudly. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the total is uh, so not the total, the final lot, the 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 inputs at the beginning were the person and the language and the final output was uh the sentence in spanish that describes what country the city that obama was in uh yeah so and we can see that now looks like a more complicated chain because this is actually those two chains composed so this runnable sequence here um these four things. This is actually the first chain that we ran uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, and then this this other outer sequence is the other one, <laughs> uh, which, uh, which combines the two. So we can see runnable map gets as input the two, um, the two input variables. And the output of runnable map is basically converting an out, a dictionary of person and language into a dictionary of city and language. So person, Obama, language, Spanish becomes this dictionary of city, something, something, Honolulu, and language, Spanish. And then we just pass that into the prompt template, which formats what country is the city Barack Obama 
the good thing LLMs are small because I wouldn't be able to figure this one out. Uh, uh, but then, this is caused by just the first LLM responding very verbosely. And so I think if, you know, if, if we were doing this for real, we'd probably use maybe like OpenAI functions or something to get a more like structured output out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, in this case, we were lucky and it still figured things out. But, um, and then we mm -hmm. just call OpenAI with this, uh, yeah, with this prompt and we get back the answer, we extract the text and there we go. That's like a composed, a chain that was composed out of two smaller chains. Uh, and that is, yeah, that's kind of a big reason why we uh, think this may be useful is to just, you know, you can build these building blocks and then just compose them into larger things. Um, is and just there... a reminder that, yeah, you know, I think maybe, maybe we'll do one if, if, if that more chains, but if people have questions, please put them in the chat um, and, and we'll try to answer them. Um, I, I, I see one in there, but we're happy to answer others as well. So, and yeah. by the chat, so, I mean the box with the question mark. Yeah. Uh, so the, the only other one that I want to show just to show you how powerful it is that everything now implements the same interface is we can actually now just use any of the I don't know, 100 tools we have in Langchain or whatever it is, and use them in these sequences as well. So here I am importing the DuckDuckGo search run tool. Um, and what I what we have is uh, a chain that basically uses an LLM to convert some kind of freeform input into something that is more re resembles more a, a search query. So turn the following user input into a search query for a search engine, and then we have the input as a placeholder. And we make a, a prompt template out of that. We pass it into the model, and we use the string output parser to get the text, and then we just pipe that into the search tool. And uh, so if I run that, I get the chain, and I invoke, uh, and that's it. That, uh, you know, hard to read string is the output of the DuckDuckGo search tool. Uh, so this is really powerful and you can use any of the tools, any of the retrievers that we have in the library in these uh, in these chain, in these pipelines. And finally, let me just show you that also that shows up here. So you can see we have a prompt template, open AI. So you can see we turned, I'd like to figure out what games are on tonight into just games tonight which is something that a search engine might be best happier with. Then we extracted just that as a string. And then we called uh, DuckDuckGo with that simple string. And we got back this unreadable thing. But you know that's what <laughs> DuckDuckGo produces. <laughs> um, and, and I think uh, important, importantly there, like um, it, everything will depend on the input type, right? So DuckDuckGo as a tool accepts just a string. There are also tools that accept structured things. And for that, you'd, you'd want it to be a, a dictionary. Um, retrievers accept a string. So for that, it's fine. Uh, prompt templates accept the dictionary because they're, they're keys. So there's a little bit of um, making sure that you have the right, the right inputs lining up. Yeah, exactly. And so for instance, if you have a tool that accepts a dictionary, uh, then what would, what is probably a nice thing for you to do is to use the open AI functions to build the, the dictionary of input to that tool and then pipe that uh, those arguments that OpenAI produce directly into the tool. Uh, so you get the the arguments and you just pipe them into the tool and it executes the tool. Awesome. Maybe let's answer a few questions in the chat. Um, and and if there are, um, yeah, people should feel free to add more and, and we'll get to them. But going through the first one, um, why another language? How is it different? Then similar to Python, JavaScript, and other current languages. I mean, this is implemented in both Python and JavaScript. It's it's yeah. not another language. Um, we kind of took inspiration from the SQL Alchemy kind of like they have a SQL Alchemy expression language, which is just a way to write SQL Alchemy in a nice composable, chainable way. Um, so not not a different programming language, just a just a different syntax. Anything you'd add yeah. to that? Uh, yeah, exactly. So and we even tried. Uh, you know, we tried as much as possible to use all the things that are built into Python. So for instance, this item getter that you have here, this is actually a built-in Python function. Um, so the idea is, you know, we're just using all the tools that are exist in Python to make it easier for you to build things in Python. 
or in JavaScript, whatever it is you want to use. Um, all right, I see uh, I see two questions that are in the same vein, and is basically uh, is this similar to LMQL, um, which is I forget what it stands for, but it's another kind of like framework slash language, mostly around I believe prompting strategies. Um, it, it's not super similar. I would say LMQL is more similar to guidance, and that is extracting kind of like I mean. Mm, Maybe it's slightly different. I, I don't think it's super simpler. I, I, I don't. Sorry, I don't think it's super similar. Um, I think this. Uh, I actually need to brush up on LMQL in the direction that they've gone. Um, um, I think. Uh, sorry. So, just the only thing I was going to say is LMQL, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, is something that requires support from the from the language model that you're trying to run it against. Um, uh, whereas, you know, uh, our expression language here is just about, you know, everything that exists in Langchain today uh, can, you know, be used and composed in this way. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, I think LMQL is much more, I think they have, like, they have, better support for more low level things like beam search over various things and decoding. Um, and it's more around interacting with like the raw language model. This is much more about composing the language model output with other things and making it easy to do that and change things. Um, so I'd, I'd say LMQL and guidance are, are, are different. Um, another, another question, with this introduction, the normal syntax code which exists, will that still be supported? Um, yeah, do you want to chat a little bit about how we're thinking about this, which by the way is early on, but you know, we're, we're, we're figuring it out. Uh, yeah, so uh, we we still want to support uh, the existing way of, you know, using uh, all the built-in chains that we have, uh, using uh, all the building blocks by themselves. So everything that was there before, we still want to support. Uh, I'd say one thing that we might do over time is now that we have the single interface, we may at some point, I don't know, a few months from now, whatever it may be, start to deprecate some of the uh, previous methods um, just to standardize on the new kind of invoke stream batch methods. Uh, but uh, yeah, this expression language is you know completely optional. It's just meant to make it easier for you to build custom things. But if you don't want to use it, all the stuff you've been used to is going to stay around. Yeah, I think we definitely see benefits to this, namely kind of like making it more like the standard interface and and kind of like making it easier to swap in pieces and, and one big piece of feedback that we've gotten that we're working on is making it easier to customize Langchain and so we think this is a step in that direction and so I think we'll probably start to move more and more of our examples towards this but we'll still absolutely keep around the the existing code. Um, uh, a few questions about basically can I assume that agents can also be executed with this syntax? Uh, so agents, uh, we don't support them in. Uh, so you can execute an agent with the with the new interface because an agent uh, executor is just a very complicated chain. So it also implements the invoke batch methods uh, and the async ones as well. Uh, what you can't do is you cannot build a custom agent using the the pipeline syntax for now. Uh, because that comes with some additional <laughs> complexities that we're, you know, we want to take small steps and uh, see what people think of this and then introduce new capabilities. Maybe we're going to, you know, make that expand that capability in the future. And maybe you'll be able to use this to build custom agents. But one thing you can do for now is definitely run all the existing agents that we already have uh, with the new interface. And also uh, use them in in sequential in in yeah the, exactly you can yeah, use like uh, a retriever to build some input that you then pipe into an agent that's something you could definitely do, which is really powerful because I think a lot of the uh, you know the a lot of what we see being done to get reliable things is basically using agents in a more modular and small way so being able to pipe them in even if you can't create them with this language yet um, is is still beneficial. Is is it ready to use or still a work in progress? Yeah, it's definitely ready to use. Uh, we have, uh, I think, pretty much cl close to complete 
code coverage for all the code related to this. So yeah, this is very much tested. Obviously it's a new feature, you know, any feedback is very welcome, but this is completely ready to use. Um, is it possible to turn on verbose mode for specific chain? Like in classic chains, we have verbose equals true using new syntax, not only debugging using langchain.debug. Uh, so um, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, what we what you get out of doing langchain.verbose equals true is something that is designed specifically for two things only. One is agents and the other one is the LLM chain. Uh, we don't currently have um, uh, output uh, designed specifically for this in the verbose mode. So for now, I'd suggest just doing langchain.debug equals true. Uh, but if if anyone has you know specific output that they want to see, uh, just let us know and uh, yeah, we'll uh, that's something we can have. Yeah, I think verbose was a, a lot of the nice stuff of verbose was done within specific chains, and the whole point of this is that it's a generic thing, so it's a bit of an anti pattern, a bit tough to to do it there. Um. Is the expression language going to be maintained by an offshoot team or by the core link chain team? Uh, no, it's uh, the idea is that yeah, we the core link chain team will maintain the expression language for sure, and we do plan on you know building new examples on top of the expression language and uh, maybe even you know porting some of the existing chains to the expression language. So yeah, definitely something we plan to maintain. A question about streaming: How is the underlying HTTP stream? Uh, handled when it's when during an interruption like if you interrupt a stream does would that prevent further token usage on their end um their end yes end? the answer is yeah if and it, by the way interrupting a stream in, in in this new model is super easy because you're consuming you're doing like four token in model dot stream and then all you need to do to interrupt that stream is break inside that loop uh, and if you do break uh, that gets you know propagated all the way back to uh, the open AI uh, uh, the open AI call and we break that call what they open AI does with that information that is up to them but you know we send them the information that it's broken that it's interrupted did you use the new syntax for the link chain teacher application yes we did so uh, I'll share that link in the chat um, we created a little teacher bot to help walk you through getting started with this and we will open source that um does this introduce any performance gains over previous methods or is it just for a better dev experience uh so that's an interesting question so um there are uh, performance gains in specific methods so for instance in the new stream methods what we do is we actually um uh basically use the the iterator that we get back from uh, from the underlying providers. So the iterator that we get back from the OpenAI SDK or the Anthropic SDK, that's what we pass directly to you. Uh, and that's more performant than just using, consuming it via callbacks. Um, so that's a performance gain if you're doing streaming. Um, another pr uh, performance improvement is uh, to do with the batch method. So uh, when you use the batch method, uh, one, if the underlying provider support, supports batch calls, we actually do that. So, you know, we don't do 10 OpenAI calls, we do a single one, even if the model, the OpenAI model is in the middle of a sequence of other things. Uh, and second, whenever there's things we can do in parallel, we do them in parallel um, uh, using a thread pool executor. So if, you know, there were some examples that I showed where we were getting two keys out of the dictionary um, because those two keys don't depend on each other, we, we actually get those two in parallel. So the overall sequence runs faster. Good question on that one. Do we need to update the lane chain package module to use this new interface? Yes, it's in the most recent one. Um, I forget which number, <laughs> um, but uh, two, two, 249 or something like that. Any way we can see the metrics which we see in Langsmith locally in our code for this syntax? I believe you should see all the same stuff with debug equals true if you set it there. Exactly. So if you do langchain.debug, you are, the output that you get is actually very similar to the output you'd get in Langsmith, just uh, you know, a little uglier because it's in your terminal. <laughs> this is this is a good question. 
do you foresee that there will be a need for some of the old calls in some use cases? Or do you think the expressions will work for all use cases? Uh, that's an interesting question. So uh, I think we have part of the answer in what I said earlier, where you can't implement a custom agent today in the new expression language, right? So that kind of implies that at least as it stands today, there are some things that require you writing custom Python code. Um, that might be true of other things. Um, so yeah, I think uh, the most likely scenarios where that's going to be true is where you use, say, some kind of for loop or a while loop or some other kind of uh, kind of repeated application where because the the sequence as we as we have it today doesn't mean that you know it won't evolve in the future, but as we have it today, the sequence is you just run it through it once. Um, so yeah, not sure if that answers the question. Yeah, no, I think I think we've. Um... The, the cookbook we put together has a lot of the most popular chains and and um there's there's also a discord channel specifically for this and we're like we we want to try to implement as many chains as possible using this so if you have kind of like questions about particular chains please let us know we will do the work we will we will implement them this is something that we, we we've been doing internally for the past like week or so and have already added a, a few new kind of like um runnable things specifically to to patch up some blind spots and so you know it's something that constantly evolving and we'll do it um i mean yeah uh, in that vein as well what's the rough roadmap for this what do you see being added to this in the in the short and medium term so i think um if we think about what we have in the library today um I'd say the two biggest uh, gaps in the expression language are one is the use of memory, uh, which right now, if you look at the cookbook, we actually have an example for that, but you'll see that it's a little verbose um, because memory is, um, I think we just need to think a little bit about how memory plays into this. Um, and the other one is, is agents. So uh, I'd say two things on the roadmap here. One is, you know, memory, memory and agents. Uh, another thing that, might be those are the two most exciting things you know yeah. how can we do <laughs> those two things <laughs> yeah exactly i should have started there <laughs> uh, uh, another thing that may be useful in the future that we're thinking about is um as you build these sequences i think it's quite natural that you're going to start to build longer kind of long long running sequences uh, and uh, so that's something that we may think about in the future like how, how can we make that easier Awesome. And then and then the last question is a very easy one. And so I can take this. Is there a Discord channel for LangChain users? And is there an invite yeah, link? Yes, there is. I'll post that in the chat afterwards. We actually announced this um, on either Friday or Saturday. So so people in the Discord channel got a few days of, of heads up. And actually, a, a bunch of them helped test it out. And there were some YouTube videos that were created. So I'd highly recommend joining. And, and for all the stuff around memory and agents that Nuno talked about, we'll probably release that in the Discord channel a few a few days ahead of time as well. Um, I think that's basically it for us today. I want to thank everyone for joining. I, I also want to thank everyone for the awesome questions that we got in. Like there was a lot of them that were all really good and I think they helped us think through some things live as well. I'd be curious for people's feedback on this, whether they liked like kind of like just the Langchain team and like 20 minutes of just like answering random questions or whether you guys want to see more kind of like bring in interesting people who are building their own things and do deep dives on that so if you guys have kind of like thoughts on that please let us know in the discord um on twitter um or, or in the chat here afterwards um or in the comments on youtube once this gets posted on youtube which it will be uh, sometime before the end of the week um with that thank you guys for joining thank you nuno for being here excited to see what you get to building with this yeah, excited to see it.